Hi there, uh, welcome to another session of Drill Dev Apps. So in this session we are going to talk about uh, the project management tools and the frameworks that we have and, and which framework to select on what uh, use cases. So this is the course content that we are offering for this entire course period and we have a full session on this. Please revisit uh, Drill Dev Apps YouTube session to get familiar with your on each tool and what we are going to cover uh, and on the, pro on the projects that we are going to handle towards the end of this training period. So in previous session, uh, we have discussed about uh, software development life cycle, waterfall model um, and we have discussed a little bit about Scrum and then we have discussed about uh, the introduction of Dev Apps, uh, key goals, key principles that we are going to achieve by uh, working on principles and uh, the introduction overview or comprehensive overview of the apps. This is what we have discussed in previous session. So in this session, uh, we are going to uh, mainly talk about uh, Agile methodology and how we are going to implement on projects. And we are going to take an example of Jira and I'm going to show you how it is going to work. Uh, so let's start the session on this uh, Agile methodology. So in Agile, uh, we have multiple frameworks. Uh, we have uh, Scrum, Kanban, we have uh, uh, feature driven uh, development, we have lean software development, we have extreme programming. These are a couple of uh, frameworks uh, that is uh, supported by Agile methodology. So many project teams uh, in many big organizations uh, use Scrum or Kanban uh, for managing their projects and on how to select uh, for which framework should be uh, matching for each project that is depend that depends on uh, individual project preferences and that we are going to discuss on what basis you can choose uh, which framework so we are going to discuss in a bit and uh, and uh, we are going to talk about scrum now so scrum uh, is an uh, agile uh, framework uh, which is going to help you to manage your project. Uh, so this basically helps you to collaborate between the teams, customer, uh, uh, it takes the customer feedbacks, it helps you to take, understand the reviews and uh, on an iterative approach, so we are going to develop the application by taking the continuous feedback, improve the software quality on an uh, um, uh, incremental basis. And we are going to work on uh, application which is having certain set of requirements predefined and over a period of time even if the requirement changes we are going to adapt during the uh, entire uh, uh, span of uh, project um, so how it is going to get implemented and all we are going to see in a bit so it's, it's an approach where uh, uh, you have a requirement bound, uh, bounded requirements you have uh, a proper uh, uh, structured teams and, and when you have a proper uh, uh, set of uh, customer centric and uh, iterative development at the time you check the uh, scrum model so uh, I, I this this can help uh, to implement on complex projects as well when you want to have big product delivered uh, and uh, it has some multiple features or like some uh, 100 features it has let's suppose it has some 100 features to get developed so you can span over, over this requirement over a period of uh, 10 team or, or a team of 10 teams and uh, you can have certain time bones to get delivered by this entire product um, in the in on, on a sprint basis so how does this work so, so let's suppose uh, you have a product owner who is going, product owner is someone who takes the requirements from the client or, or the vendor and he is going to give this uh, break these uh, requirements into uh, epics or, or, or a big chunk of requirements on a hierarchy basis like which one to develop first he will prioritize and he is going to give it to the scrum master uh, on the development team so scrum master is the one who picks this uh, uh, requirements and assign it in the sprint for the development teams. So development teams understands and, and take these requirements and start developing. This is high level. So this this can make sure that each team can discuss on their 
requirements uh, if there is any uh, understanding issues or if there is any doubts they have they can discuss openly in this particular uh, meeting with the product owner uh, and and the and, and and between the development teams and on the devops team and creating whoever involves in this particular development they can all sit together and understand the requirements on uh, uh, the individual prospect perspectives of our individual works they have been working on creating work on the test cases and the devops team can work on the cicd process and the infrastructure they need so these teams can constitute together and start working on this so this uh, is where uh, um, this entire uh, uh, scrum model has been uh, uh, taken care uh, and we can apply it on the teams uh, or the project that has an incremental approach and have a proper uh, requirements defined so to uh, um, implement this uh, framework uh, we need certain set of uh, people or a, or a uh, designators who has certain roles predefined roles that they work on daily basis and uh, um, they are they are the responsible people who are uh, who are uh, there to collaborate the teams and work on the individual uh, 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 individual assignments that they have been uh, working for so if you if you see if, if you see the slide uh, you can uh, talk about the set of roles even artifacts to facilitate the effective collaboration and continuous improvement within a development team so what does this mean so these are the people these, there are certain roles and there are certain events that is going to happen over a course of period and the artifacts that actually uh, uh, defines each work uh, into bits and pieces and that is where uh, you start assigning it to the people and start collaborating between each team and the each individual member within the team and make sure that uh, uh, they are taking the feedback at the end of the uh, each event and work on the new task that they are going to assign for each new event so this whole thing constitute in developing a big product even if it is a complex project breaking them into small bits and pieces and assigning assigning them on a hierarchy basis helps you to work on a big products or complex projects that is what this entire scrum model helps you to do so uh, when you want to implement a scrum uh, uh, model uh, in a project you want to have certain roles and then certain events to happen and, and certain uh, artifacts which is going to give you information of progress of the work that each team has done so in this slide we are going to see how uh, each role is uh, different and each role acts uh, in the entire uh, uh, life cycle of a uh, application development and see each event what it is going to happen and how it is going to happen and then the progress how we monitor the progress and the iterations that uh, each uh, you know, when you complete each sprint you are going to see what all the work you have done and uh, on, on an incremental fashion so let's discuss on roles first so uh, when you want to implement ajay uh, you have certain roles defined uh, in the in the entire team where uh, product owner is the one who actually works with the uh, client and in with, uh, and, uh, with the development team he will be the facilitator between client and the development teams who is going to take the requirements from the client and he is going to break them into uh, understandable format by the development team and he is going to give the um, uh, entire uh, requirements in a product backlog or the bag of items which is uh, which is on a hierarchical basis like he will list down the priority of the uh, features that uh, that is going to develop uh, develop and delivered over a period of time he will assign the priority and uh, uh, share it in a bag of items which is called a product backlog so he will be the middleman between uh, uh, the client and uh, the development team and um, uh, every sprint uh, uh, planning and sprint review meetings he is going to be there uh, to monitor the uh, progress of the work that they have, that the individual teams have done, and see if the if if the product that they are de delivering on each sprint is actually matching with the requirements. He is going to be the one who is uh, giving feedback or reviews uh, uh, with the by by taking that to the 
client he is going to take the feedback and he is going to make sure that it is aligning with the requirements that is what product owner does and uh, he will uh, he will also uh, make sure uh, that if there is any clarifications or, or key decision to make in the uh, entire process or the flow of project uh, he will be the uh, master or a guider who is going to make certain key decisions or, or give proper clarification on the requirement uh, on to the development team or whoever teams involved he will be the one who is going to uh, be the key role, playing the key role uh, so that uh, he, every team has certain uh, criteria of work and uh, with a clear uh, understanding of what they are going to work on deliver so scrum master uh, scrum master will be a servant leader and a facilitator for the scrum teams so scrum teams um, in this sense uh, it could be a development team it could be a uh, um, qa team or it could be a, a, a devops team all these teams can constitute and he can uh, uh, be be the scrum master who is a driving force of uh, every spring uh, and the, he will be the one who is going to break the uh, blockages or the um, doubts that they have or any dependencies that uh, if there is any dependencies between the teams he is going to uh, be the responsible guy who is going to unblock them by, by talking to the other teams or the dependent teams and provide a proper solution so basically he will ensure uh, that scrum framework is being understood uh, by each member in the uh, team um, and then he is going to help the impediments or obstacles that have that may uh, block the entire progress uh, he will also facilitate meetings be, meetings such as uh, sprint planning daily stand ups sprint reviews sprint retrospective brainstormings all these things can be uh, collaborated uh, by the scrum master within the teams and he will uh, uh, so basically they will work uh, to create an environment which has a proper collaboration uh, continuous improvement and uh, self organized so these are the guys who will make sure that uh, all the teams are working fine on daily basis so then development team so development team is uh, uh, a cross functional group of uh, uh, people who takes the responsibility of uh, each requirement and starts working on it and provide a shippable product or a deliverable product towards the end of the sprint so he these these guys collaborate to decide uh, on the best approaches how they can achieve each uh, requirement or the each goal uh, in uh, on a sprint uh, and then they will collectively uh, work uh, or, or be accountable or responsible for work they are they have committed during the sprint planning meeting so this is uh, being managed by uh, developer teams are being managed by uh, uh, the develop, development manager or dev lead and he is going to split the work between the individual people and then he will be the one who is going to uh, take the uh, small tasks and uh, assign the priority to them and he is going to make sure that uh, each uh, work has been uh, calculated on on hourly basis or, or on a day basis and he is going to make sure uh, or help scrum master or a product owner that how much time it is going to take for each requirement to get materialistic uh, so he that is how uh, the the development team and the dev, dev lead or manager can help uh, individuals uh, to perform their uh, uh, roles uh, on daily basis so these teams uh, this team may include programmers designers testers qa uh, devops all these uh, team members you can consider all these teams as a development team so that uh, so all these people constitute to deliver a product so they we can collectively call them as a development team so coming to events uh, so to make sure that uh, all the uh, things are happening on daily basis we should have certain events or or follow up things uh, to make sure that uh, 
everything is going in smoother fashion so first thing is like like i was discussing a while back sprint sprint planning daily scrums reviews retrospectives brainstorming so all these comes under events what does this sprint do sprint uh, is again uh, it, it's a time bo- time boxed iterations or you can call uh, uh, them as a, a, a uh, iterative fashion or a time that have been uh, given to development team for uh, uh, working on certain pieces of requirements over a span of 2 to 4 1 to 4 weeks it will be 1 to 4 weeks so typically um, if you consider max to max it should uh, go for 4 weeks uh, the iteration period uh, of or a time bound for each sprint and uh, each team should work uh, or, or it should span minimum of one week at least so this is decided by uh, this decision is collectively taken by the scrum master and the development teams probably uh, that i have seen was like two weeks is the ideal time so two weeks sprint will be there like if they start on this monday they are going to uh, again uh, review the entire sprint uh, on the uh, alternative mondays which gives you over a two weeks uh, of uh, sprint uh, duration so that is how they are going to work and, and provide a shippable product or a deliverable product uh, at the end of each sprint and if you consider if you calculate like over a 10 sprints uh, which is spanning around uh, 20 weeks uh, considering each each sprint will be two weeks uh, time boxed uh, then you can see a good uh, high quality high quality deliver uh, delivered product at the end of the uh, 10 week sprint so that is a uh, that is how you can calculate uh, the entire uh, uh, sprints uh, how it is going to define uh, or, or deliver a product at the end of each sprint and over a period of couple of sprints it is be a high value product that is being delivered to the client so that is what sprint do and then the sprint planning a meeting held between the uh, development teams uh, who is whoever is involved like the team the team direction whoever involves there there could be a, a sprint planning uh, where uh, uh, each individual teams are selected and they are going to talk about the individual assignments that they have done for this entire previous sprint and then they are going to plan for next sprint uh, uh, like what they are going to take for next sprint they, they basically they will uh, plan what uh, each team should take and they are going to uh, uh, divide the tasks on, on from the product backlog so sprint planning it's a meeting that held uh, at the beginning of each sprint and uh, where team selects items from uh, product backlog and defines what to be done during the sprint or uh, during course of two, two weeks if the sprint is spanning for two weeks that is what sprint planning does and daily scrum or stand up we call uh, so this is on a daily basis uh, it will be short and, and they, they are going to discuss what they have worked on previous day and what they are going to work on next day and this uh, uh, is facilitated by the scrum master uh, with multiple uh, team members and uh, each individual team member should talk on their progress of work that they have assigned uh, for previous day and the next day and if there is any blockages or any dependency issues scrum master will facilitate with our other teams if there is any uh, uh, clarifications needed from the product owner on the requirement or if there is any dependency on any QA teams or any development teams or any DevOps team, he is going to facilitate and talk about uh, and un- unblock the uh, individual team member. That is where stand up happens, and each day it could be uh, spanning from uh, uh, 15 minutes to 30 minutes based on the team's capacity. And uh, sprint review uh, again, the sprint review is meeting held at, uh, again. This happens with the sp- same sprint planning. Sprint planning, sprint review, sprint retrospective will happen all together in a single meeting, uh, which happens every alternate uh, uh, weeks. Like if the sprint is spanning over a two weeks period of time, like let's suppose uh, this Monday sprint has started on every alternate Monday, which means the sprint ending day, you can consider 
on that particular day you can have a sprint planning or the sprint review meeting where individual stock uh, um, or, or each indiv each team talks about their progress and, and uh, they are going to uh, have a, a, a showcase like what have they completed and what is there in the uh, in progress or in sprint backlogs and uh, they are going to get feedback from the uh, stakeholders or product owners or clients so that is where sprint review happens and the sprint retrospective uh, retrospective meeting um, uh, this is again happens in the same sprint planning meeting at the end of each sprint where team reflects on their uh, sprint process like what went wrong what went right and what they have learned over a period of this time and how it can be improved uh, so that is where sprint retrospective comes um, so people talk uh, what happened what like if, if individual team member is taken like he is going to talk uh, what what has what has uh, went right for him like if he has uh, learned new things or if he has completed the assigned tasks and uh, if there is some blockages happened or if there is anything that can be improved in the next sprint that is where retrospective comes in coming to artifacts uh, this is where uh, uh, the entire uh, uh, requirements are, are uh, products that provide uh, transparency and information about the project's progress uh, means like uh, uh, so all the requirements will be uh, available here and, and based on the each uh, 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 artifact like product backlog, spring backlog or increment that we are going to discuss so each uh, based on this information any individual can calculate what uh, what was the requirement and what has a team achieved or delivered and what was there in the work in progress so this this is where uh, uh, people can get the information of the entire uh, project where it stands uh, at that particular day and where it is going to uh, go ahead in future uh, so everything will, will be seen and calculated from artifacts let's discuss about uh, each uh, individual artifact or called as information uh, blockage so you can call product back backlog what does product backlog do so product backlog uh, is a place where you can see in the bag of requirements that i have been discussing so product owner takes the requirements from the uh, client or, or the stakeholder and uh, he is going to write all those requirements in an understandable format by the individual development teams and he is going to list all those things in a hierarchical fashion like which one uh, he will prioritize the uh, requirement which one should be delivered or taken first and uh, start developing so that is where product backlog means and then the spring backlog what does spring backlog uh, have so like we have discussed in the events uh, so we will be having sprints or spanning over one week to four weeks and we have considered uh, two weeks would be the ideal time so if we take two weeks of time for each sprint sprint backlog means like a, a people um, it's, it's a subset of product backlog so if, if you consider uh, a big uh, whole uh, circle of product backlog inside it it will be a small circle so product uh, it, it's a subset of product backlog sprint backlog is a subset of product backlog where uh, it contains set of work items uh, like user stories uh, tasks or uh, subtasks or bugs uh, selected by development team to be completed during uh, the sprint time uh, or current sprint time which is like uh, two weeks so over these two weeks uh, development team selects uh, what they are going to work uh, for this entire two period two weeks of time so it, uh, uh, it, it, it represents the team's commitment for uh, that uh, specific uh, sprint and then as the team works on the selected item the sprint backlog may evolve or may change uh, based on the feedback uh, and based on the uh, team's uh, availability or bandwidth if someone inside the team can uh, uh, take any emergency leave or any individual has some personal uh, emergencies or medical emergencies when all they take they are going to have the those items in the pending state and it is going to carry for the next sprint as well 
which means uh, uh, as it, uh, the team sprint backlog may change or may evolve uh, based on the requirements or based on the bandwidth or it is going to affect uh, based on the uh, dependencies uh, team commit uh, and and uh, whenever uh, a team commits uh, to deliver the items by the end of sprint uh, so if if they fall short of uh, delivering uh, what they have committed then that goes as a sprint backlog in the next sprint or it is going to carry forward to the next sprint so all these are uh, sprint backlogs where a list of uh, uh, items that have been taken for this particular sprint uh, and then development team commits to deliver by the end of the sprint so it may change over a period of time in the sprint taking as per the feedback or the stakeholder comes in or any scrum master wants uh, have seen something that is going in wrong direction they may update the sprint backlog and make sure that it is going in the right direction without uh, any delays so that is what our sprint backlog have it is a bag of items which is taken for over a period of sprint time it could be anything between one to four weeks and the development teams uh, commit that these are the items that they are going to deliver at the end of the sprint that is what sprint backlog means increment increment is sum of all completed items or works that is done during the sprint it includes like uh, features user stories or bug fixes that they have done over a period of time uh, for, for these two weeks at the end of each sprint, the team should have a, a, a shippable or a deliverable product uh, uh, on an incremental incremental basis which means the that the product should have should be in a state where it could be released to the customers and then the change is reflected at the customer end so each increment builds upon uh, previous ones and leading to the potential releasable product at the end of the each sprint that means like if you like you will be say, uh, see, seeing this uh, uh, updates in the uh, applications, uh, mobile applications, where you will be frequently getting the upgrades uh, or uh, update your app based based on the times. So you'll be seeing seeing that update option on your applications if you go to the Play Store. So that is that means like each sprint or each team over a period of time have worked on certain features or bug fixes that they have got from the customers and they have delivered the updated or released version in the next cycle which is which could be spanning from two weeks or, or whichever team that uh, the, whichever uh, project that have a specific time duration or the or entire uh, product that have been delivered they can decide when to release the exact version or the updated version uh, based on the uh, fixes or the up updates or security updates that they have done over a period of time so that is where increments happen uh, over your versions so you will be saving the versions latest versions uh, over a period of time so what are what are iterations iterations are are called sprints again uh, we have discussed about sprints already uh, so these uh, these uh, iterations uh, are, are a time box period uh, are, are sprints or time box uh, periods during which scrum team works to deliver a certain shippable project uh, and uh, So talking about iterations, uh, iterations can be uh, uh, it can be like described as as a 
uh, variety of time box periods like if you say can if you consider as a sprint uh, it is a time box uh, thing where you will develop uh, your application over a period of 1 to 4 weeks so iterations is very similar to it where uh, 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 so iteration can be described of variety of time box periods but sprint is the only uh, uh, one that is very close to the iterations um, So talking about iterations, uh, iterations is uh, it, it can be used to describe a variety of time box periods. Uh, it could be uh, like one to eight weeks. Uh, it could be anything. But uh, in, in Scrum, we talk mainly on uh, uh, sprint, which uh, it, it is very conjunction to the uh, Scrum model. So iterations are uh, re irrelevant when we don't have a proper time bounds spanning like one to four weeks it go it can go beyond that and that is why it is very less focused ah. in the next slide uh, we are going to talk about uh, uh, the issue types uh, where uh, you can apply it on the scrum model uh, so i am going to show you an example in the jira board itself but uh, if you uh, if you see the hierarchy basis and, and software projects are software development projects and that you are going to apply for a scrum model you can see epic epic as a uh, let's suppose you have an initiative of a project where you got some requirements those requirements are uh, taken and broken into small pieces called epics epics uh, i mean uh, epics are uh, again uh, uh, under initiative or the requirements all these epics constitute multiple features or multiple requirements clubbed together or uh, in one single epic and you can have multiple epics uh, which are which constitute a big product so epics So in this slide, uh, we are taking Jira as an example for our project management. And we are we are applying Scrum model, and uh, so Jira has a wide a wide variety of uh, uh, project models uh, where uh, uh, software uh, projects can be used for uh, Scrum model, and we are taking that as an example. And uh, inside that, we have multiple issue types, and uh, taking an example of uh, again uh, any training platform uh, so we are going to have one uh, requirement of uh, requirement to develop a training platform so if you take that as an example that entire requirement is uh, 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 broken into pieces of epics uh, and each epic will have certain uh, uh, features that needs to be developed uh, over a period of time so epics are uh, again uh, each a it represents a large uh, body of work or large pieces of requirements uh, that can be broken down into user stories that you can see in the down story story means user story you can have all these uh, stories and uh, story represents a, a customer requirement expressed as a, uh, a kind of uh, small feature uh, that can be developed and tested within a spacing L screen so you can take uh, you can uh, consider like if you talk about sprint uh, people uh, so all these epics are broken into user stories 
and each user story can be assigned to each individual uh, inside a development team or any teams that have been involved that is where the story means and that story again you can break that uh, story into task and task is a, a, a used for non development related activities or tasks that can be completed as a part of project you can consider that as a task and again that can you can again create a subtask uh, again it's a child it's a smallest piece that you can do it in a entire uh, issue type uh, so it can be subtasks are the le uh, smallest uh, or a child that can be created uh, under a parent issue to further break down and manage work so that is where uh, you can uh, consider task subtask is the smallest uh, or uh, sing, um, or a uh, small child uh, that can be created from the parent issues it could be user story it could be epic it could be task so you can create a subtask on any of these things so that is where uh, these things comes in but initially jira was created as a bug tracking tool and later on it is converted to development tool as well which is it is going to track all your development activities so coming to bug uh, bug uh, you, bug track uh, bug tracks the defects uh, or issues found during the testing or production uh, so whenever uh, uh, let's suppose you want to develop one ui uh, in the epic in first epic and developers uh, created uh, uh, user stories for individual uh, tasks like if there are multiple uis or multiple pages in your ui then let's suppose they have created uh, uh, two user stories for developing that under that they have created a task and under task they have created subtask so in this entire subtask they have completed the subtask and task and they have completed user stories and they send it for qa for testing so now uh, qa has started their uh, uh, functional testing or any any te manual testing they have done some testing and they raised a bug so to track that bug we will create a bug bug uh, bug type bug issue type and we will we are going to track until it is getting fixed in the same sprint or uh, if it if the sprint is towards same uh, it is tracked in the next sprint so jira initially jira was initially created to track these kind of bugs in the uh, in the project but later on it is moved to develop a project as well so that is where uh, this hierarchy comes in now let's see we see it with an example okay i have created two two uh, projects which is uh, kanban and scrum since we talked about scrum we are going to see what scrum board is in scrum like we have discussed we have uh, issue types uh, where uh, so let's talk about uh, backlog items first uh, so we have discussed what backlog items is or product backlog means so if you consider uh, so when you create certain uh, things uh, you can take uh, so let's see what issue types are first so we have issue types of uh, epic bug user story task subtask so we have all these uh, issue types that we have discussed uh, epic is a big uh, uh, big uh, uh, requ uh, requ requirements are a group of requir requirements combined together as an epic and uh, you have user story user stories when you uh, uh, break that epic into small user stories and assign it to individuals to work on it and once the user story is created uh, people can create a task out of it and work on individual uh, development uh, thing or they can create again subtasks for creating a documents or uh, working on some small uh, uh, small things uh, they can divide that and close one by one and when they deliver this user story uh, to qa qa starts uh, testing it and they can uh, whenever they find some issues they can create a bug, bug bug issue type where we can project teams can track using this bug ticket that they have created and and uh, they are going to uh, follow it up until it is getting fixed so these are the issue types initially and if you see uh, uh, the uh, backlogs so we have we have talked about two types of backlogs product backlog and sprint backlog if you see uh, i have a backlog product backlog items of four where uh, 
uh, this can be uh, given some uh, 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 priority medium high low like that based on this priority people start uh, the uh, spring during the spring planning meeting people starts taking it uh, like they will just uh, they are going to uh, whenever they start spring planning so uh, they can just drag it and put it here as a sprint backlog sprint backlog is place where when you start working on a sprint uh, or when you start a new sprint they are going to take uh, items from the backlogs and they are going to uh, commit uh, our development teams commit to take all these backlogs and they, are, they will try to deliver it in the current sprint that they are going to start so like i said if you if you see the sprint, uh, it can span for uh, uh, two weeks time. So I have created for uh, sprint for two weeks time. And if you see, let me show you the timings, the timeline. So this is spanning. This is a, this is my sprint. If you see, my sprint started on 24th July and it is going to end on uh, 7th uh, August. So this will be my two-week sprint model, and uh, I can create that. And these are my epics. Uh, if you see, these are my epics that I have created. So you can see epics in this way. Well, epics are large beta large. Uh, a group of requirements combined together and from the epics we are going to create user stories so this is about epics this is about uh, sprint uh, and, and uh, you can uh, always change the settings if you want or you can see the options like uh, weeks how many weeks if you want to see or in a day you can define it in a days as well uh, so it started on 24 and it is going to end on 27 so these are the you know, sprint um, uh, span uh, sprint timings and uh, uh, like I said uh, I can uh, deliver as per my requirement I can deliver these things uh, I can consider I can consider taking uh, these uh, items that gets delivered during these two weeks so that goes to backlogs so product backlog is group of requirements that uh, is constituting a big the application or a double uh, or a uh, project you can consider so uh, from this product backlog sprint backlog is getting created so this can be taken this is uh, taken for a uh, two week sprint uh, which is spanning from one to four weeks now i have taken two weeks sprint so i have considered that i am going to deliver all these uh, items in this sprint this is what called sprint backlog and this is product backlog now let's see the active sprints so active sprints, uh, you can have. So this is not completely uh, uh, extra. I mean, uh, you can see multiple stages as well in, during this entire process. So you start uh, committing for this entire sprint that I am going to do all these tasks. So I have committed having uh, delivered by end of this sprint. I am going to deliver all these tasks, and I am going to assign each for each individual. Uh, if you see this sprint, I have only, uh, assigned it for. Uh, uh, Manish Babu, I have assigned uh, this uh, again for Manish Babu, and I have assigned this for uh, okay. I can assign it to anyone, uh, like these are the people that are there. I can assign it to Kalyan, or I can assign it to uh, uh, Drill DevOps team. So, the, this is how you are going to assign. Uh, so, these items are already so if you see uh, Scrum. Uh, Scrum model, uh, it will have a pro list of uh, items that is going to get delivered. Means we have a clear cut of requirements uh, that is uh, kept in product backlog. And uh, this backlog is not uh, a uh, fixed one, it can change or it can be appended. Means like you, you can add a, uh, you can add all your backlog items or whenever uh, your product is changing or whenever your uh, you want to change your requirement as per the market trends so uh, stakeholders or product owner comes and gives it to stakeholder comes and gives it to product owner and product owner can change this product backlog accordingly and these are picked in the each sprint so that is how this is going to work and if you see this 
this is where uh, uh, this uh, our team individual dev teams or scrum master uh, is going to uh, assign uh, tasks for this particular sprint or our deliverable that is going to get delivered and the development teams can commit on their work for the end of this sprint what they are going to deliver here and the individual tasks have been assigned or user stories you can call and you can see the user stories this is an user story if you see the type it is an user story and then you can see the uh, epics that is uh, created here uh, this is an epic type if you see this it is again user story and uh, you can change the issue type from uh, epic epic is a big thing so we can change this to oh, sub -ta task or something like this and this is how it is going to be in progress normally epic takes time so you can take you can consider this as an epic like you can change in this way that is what i am trying to show and uh, uh, you can once it is done you can move it to review basically in everyday standard uh, so people uh, scrum master uh, will be uh, hosting that uh, meeting and he is uh, going to ask uh, in the call he is going to ask like uh, individual team like let's suppose the dev devops team my manish bhavan kalyan are there in the, and he is going to take feedback uh, he is going to see who is working on what let's suppose this is being working by manish and he'll tell the progress and he's, he has developed that particular uh, 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 this particular thing uh, the, that has been assigned he is going to move for review which can be reviewed by the same team members peer review we can call uh, what whether he has uh, developed a proper way and he can erase pull request based on the pull request uh, he has reached he is going to analyze what is going uh, if, if everything is working fine or not so there are certain criteria that we can discuss how that can be calculated or validated uh, so that is taken on the build process if build is success then they are going to merge so again I am going to talk about in the build section when we get into it so once that is review is done, uh, it is merged and uh, uh, we are going to create a snapshot version of that build and we are going to send it for review and during this review meeting, um, du during this review meeting people start uh, uh, analyzing, uh, I mean uh, people start, uh, uh, I mean QA team starts testing the feature and once that uh, uh, testing is done if they are going to get an issue they are going to create a, a issue type from here uh, they, are, they can create like the, which project it comes if they want to create bug they can and then status to do and uh, found bug found bug and they can uh, uh, they can relate uh, it to any sprint uh, like let's suppose uh, found bug and uh, let me discard this for a minute and let's suppose we will take a phase one development let's see if there is any UI okay so let's see if uh, UI has been developed and it went to review and it has been uh, approved and it has been uh, uh, changed much uh, change my changes have been merged and a build is created and, and it has been tested so it is in the staging environment or testing environment and developer starts testing it now they found out there is there was one issue now when they found that there was one issue they are going to raise bug fix bug ticket from here and uh, they start uh, putting that uh, develop UI uh, some chain uh, found bug bug and they are going to explain uh, what that whole bug is all about and if they want to uh, attach it or if they want to block that particular issue like this issue they want to block the one second let me if they want to uh, attach it or if they want to see like which is uh, blocking so we he, they can uh, attach that and, and uh, they can uh, put it in this thing they want to create can, so when they create this issue view the issue you see it can be blocked uh, the, that epic that we have created right 
they can block this epic by updating uh, epic link they have created and if they want to attach this uh, link issue they can attach it is blocked uh, or uh, what you can do is uh, this particular kva review so let me go to active spins they can block this particular item which is in the QA, uh, development phase uh, where is this okay this is this is this went on the qa right so they can block this issue at the qa section itself by linking the issue uh, is blocked by uh, this one they can link this and whenever uh, uh, whenever they open this they can see which issue has blocked see phone bug in this particular epic and uh, this particular epic doesn't go to complete or it is it doesn't go to done until uh, this bug is fixed so uh, they will they will take this bug and move it into progress now let's assume that they have fixed this bug it went to review and uh, once that review is done and it is merged the changes are merged and that changes move to again staging environment or qa environment now qs people started uh, uh, work uh, testing it and they found that it is been uh, rectified now they can move this uh, thing into uh, they will be like we can uh, we can have a lot of comments here it's not like we don't have any comments they will they will be discussions uh, happening here uh, like any any dependency issues or any uh, thing that they have doubts uh, development team or qa team has they can talk in the comments and uh, we, every team who is involved in this they can get a notification from here and let's suppose that QA bug is fixed, they have, then it is more to fixed. Now it is fixed and this can be moved. Since this bug is fixed, again they will go for new release and again they will test it whole complete thing and then they will move it to done. So this is how the entire life cycle goes. And they, first they will go to do, uh, uh, first they will pick the task from the sprint backlog and they are going to work on it. And in this sprint backlog, they uh, once they commit uh, certain tasks that they are going to do, they will move into progress review QA. If they find any bugs here, they are, to, they are going to create bug fix, and they are going to work on bug fix. And once the bug fix is done, then only they will move from QA to done. So this is entire this entire process continues, and every day there will be a stand up meeting for discussing about their progress, individual progress, and, and if there is any blocks happen uh, or uh, how they are going to proceed with the uh, dependency issues and all. So this will be openly communicated by the Scrum Master and, and the individual team members and that's how they collaborate with, in between the teams. So once uh, the sprint is done, you can always see the uh, burn down charts. You can have all these uh, burn down charts, sprint report, velocity chart and which is not needed for us. These are all taken care by the Scrum Masters for now. You just need to understand uh, how the entire Scrum model works. So this is about uh, the uh, uh, Scrum and let's uh, see how we can end the sprint. So you can complete the sprint by putting this and uh, you can create a move to new sprint or you can also, also move these items to backlog where you wanted to move these uh, in progress items or uh, the items to do you can move to the backlog or you want to move to the next sprint you can consider that six were incompleted and you can see the new sprint comes you can see the link uh, you if you want to attach those links you can do it or uh, if you want to do if you want to uh, see what has been uh, in progress or what are what is there under qa you can always assign it to other people or even move it to backlog or you can always uh, move it to the next sprint this is a sprint report and if you see back to the project go to the active sprint this sprint is done and uh, you can always create a new sprint So that's how uh, you are going to create uh, all these things our, our scrum master will handle but you just need to understand 
and familiar and get familiar with the uh, story types uh, or issue types and how it can be managed on on a high level so if you can understand these things at high level then uh, we are good to go or understand the project when you go to the pro, uh, a company or a project uh, at the real time so now let's discuss about kanban So let's discuss on uh, Kanban model. Uh, Kanban is an again agile uh, management methodology that focuses mainly on visualizing the project uh, or uh, work that we are going to do and optimizing the workflow on a day on a uh, daily basis or uh, over a period of time. And mainly uh, it will foster a continuous delivery approach. So basically, in, in Scrum, we are going to deliver the product on iterative fashion on every sprint endings but are every releases but here you are going to deliver your uh, uh, deliverables or assign tasks on daily basis or uh, certain time that have been committed and it's a continuous delivery approach you don't rely on time so when your project is is uh, is kind of uh, uh, in demand on daily basis so to deliver the tasks that have been assigned at that time we can go with scrum model uh, sorry kanban model so uh, it's a continuous delivery approach uh, and it, it basically uh, uh, you can adapt uh, this for uh, uh, improving the efficiency and then productivity of your uh, teams uh, that have been involved so that time we can think of using kanban model uh, kanban model uh, is uh, is flexible and uh, uh, adaptive for managing your workloads on daily basis which which have high demand in in on uh, delivering a daily uh, deliverables uh, like kind of if you have any access issues or if you want to you know, upgrade some tools or if you want to uh, uh, upgrade any any applications or if you have any failovers so that is where uh, you get a task to roll back to the previous version or if you want to have some uh, security fixes done for your tools or servers you can uh, create a ticket where uh, the, the team that is assigned can act immediately and try to fix as soon as possible so you, you don't you can give an estimated time but it can be done within or outside of uh, the limitations as per defined to that particular uh, uh, task so it, it mainly uh, emphasizes mainly on continuous delivery efficiency and collaboration so that was that is what Kanban model is, and uh, we have uh, in in this model uh, to achieve uh, to implement uh, this model to any project we have to have certain features features like uh, Kanban board, uh, work in progress limits, continuous uh, delivery where uh, we we uh, try to resolve problems on daily basis. It's a pull based uh, system. I'm going to show you how that works, and foc it mainly focus on the uh, cycle time rather than uh, a, a sprint models and uh, it's a continuous improvement based on uh, the activities that is done previously based on that we are going to do a retrospective and we can think of having a proper improvements on that uh, issues and we can have flexibility and uh, adaptability uh, to implement this particular model when you have product pro projects like managing the uh, entire team after developing any project so that is where these features comes in and uh, 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 so let's uh, in, let's talk about what uh, visual kanban board means uh, so it basically represents the workflow uh, of uh, your project and uh, or any issue type you, if you have any issue types uh, it on based on the each issue type you can have a different flow uh, like if you have any change management or change requests that have to be implemented on weekends you can see the flow of that uh, like let's suppose i want to upgrade my uh, uh, tool from one version to another let's suppose i want to upgrade a uh, nexus uh, tool from uh, uh, nexus 2 to nexus 3 version 2 to version 3 so i have to do it on a weekend because it is going to impact if i work on 
weekdays or if I upgrade on weekdays, it is going to impact. Now, uh, how can I do it uh, uh, over a period of time? So, let's suppose I will create one change request or change management request where you can call it as CRQs, uh, change requests or uh, CRQs, change CMs like that. So, change request uh, we can call. So, I created change request. In that change request, I am going to uh, uh, give all the list of activities that I am going to do on that particular change window or change period. Let's suppose my change uh, window is on Saturday and Sunday, IST timings, um, morning uh, 9 am to on Sunday 9 pm. So this is my change window. During that time, we are going to send a uh, pre uh, uh, before we work on uh, sending uh, uh, before we work on the actual implementation. In before that, we are going to send couple of notifications to make sure that all the people who are working or who are, who are utilizing this Nexus, uh, we are going to send a notification saying that we are uh, going to work on this uh, version upgrade and this tool will not be available for the next two days. That is where we are going to send an email, and um, when uh, when the time comes, uh, when we are creating that change, when we are creating that CRQ, we are going to mention change window, and uh, we will send a notification, and then uh, uh, we will have a plan of uh, all the activities that we are going to do, how how we are going to do with all the technical details and the theoretical details, of all the uh, step by step model, and then we are going to give. Uh, the QBA reports or the testing reports that we have done, uh, in how it has been achieved in the staging environment and how we are going to implement in the production environment. And uh, if and we are also going to give a uh, rollout strategy as well, rollback strategy, where uh, if, if something fails while doing this uh, upgrade, how we are going to roll back and how it is not going to impact uh, any teams if, if the production upgrade fails. So, we, we have this list of all project flow or the issue type flow in the uh, in the each project uh, inside a Kanban model or issue type inside a Kanban model. So, I am going to show you that how it, it can be changed or how you can modify it um, while, while giving an example uh, giving in the Jira board. So that is what a visual Kanban Kanban board means. Uh, it is going to have to do task in progress, review and uh, and uh, completed. So you can see all those things. Work in progress limits. Uh, this is again uh, a constraint on the number of uh, assigned tasks uh, are allowed in each column. Like uh, if 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 I have uh, five members in the team and I have uh, 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 ten to do list, uh, I can assign I can have a limit on work in progress or in progress tickets that I each individual can have uh, or uh, together in a team you can have uh, only certain list of tasks based on the bandwidth of the people uh, that are contributing to that project. So you can have that limits uh, to have like uh, uh, five um, means uh, five members in the team each team can work on uh, one task and once that is done then only they can pick. So like that I can put a limitations to that work in progress tickets and it basically constitutes continuous delivery where Kanban uh, 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 mainly uh, promotes uh, the continuous flow of work uh, and, and uh, allowing the team to be to, to get the deliverables done as soon as it is completed instead of waiting uh, uh, for, for entire things to be done um, uh, like uh, this sprint. So in sprint, even if you complete each work, by all the work of all the individual people can be delivered towards the end of the sprint instead of middle of the sprint. So here it is not like that. It is uh, the, the work that you are going to do are complete. It is delivered then and there, and then uh, the people who reported that issue can uh, see the change or resolution uh, immediately once it is completed. That is what continuous delivery means. Full system. So here uh, you won't get uh, a scrum master. Uh, scrum master will be there, but he is not going to uh, uh, assign you or wait for you. Uh, wait for the sprint planning to be done at that time. It is going to. He is not going to assign you at that time. So it is like pull based system. Whenever you get a request, if you are band, if you have some bandwidth, you are going to pick that 
uh, which means uh, pull, pull that from the to do list and uh, assign it for yourself and work on it and complete it. So that is what pull based system is. Uh, individual team member can pull the tasks from the uh, list of tasks are created or the issues reported based on that, based on your bandwidth, people are going to uh, pull that and work on it. So that is what pull system means. Uh, focus on flow of life cycle. Uh, so basically this uh, cycle, uh, the time it takes to work uh, on each item uh, can uh, and finish that uh, over a period of time. Uh, like uh, when a task is assigned to any, any people in that particular team, uh, so we are going to track and then see how much time it is going to take and then uh, uh, helping to identify uh, so, so basically what happens is uh, whenever you assigned a task that came for the first time uh, and, and you are working for it and and uh, towards the end of time it took some some time for you to complete that like one hour one day or two day and then once you resolve it uh, and on an on a daily scrum meeting or over a period of time there will be certain uh, events or meetings scheduled at that time they can talk about how to improve this task if you are getting these tasks repeatedly like documenting the task and trying to uh, apply uh, any automation to uh, improve on that particular task whenever uh, a, this type of task comes in automatically the automation that you have written takes care so like that you can improve yourself or find the bottlenecks or, 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 or any issues or repeatable things that you identify and try to improve the workflow efficiency that is what uh, flow and life cycling uh, time constitutes can use uh, improvement like I said if you are getting tasks that are uh, repeatedly or issues that are getting repeatedly you can take that uh, uh, all the tasks into one consideration uh, find the common common uh, things that each each task have and we can try to uh, automate those things or uh, try to resolve uh, at the root level uh, so that it is not going to get repeated that is what continuous improvement does flexibility and adaptability again uh, this uh, uh, this particular uh, Kanban projects or Kanban framework can help to team be flexible on timings or, and collaborate with the multiple teams to try to finish whenever uh, there is any dependency issues and try to speak to them, collaborate and try to close that uh, incident as soon as you get or as soon as priority uh, uh, happens. Uh, so that is where flexibility and adaptability makes it makes a way uh, to implement this Kanban feature. So, uh, management type issues uh, when you have uh, a project with management thing or maintenance projects, that time uh, we can have these type of issue types like change, which I told like change request, uh, IT help if if uh, uh, if any uh, team member needs any IT help, they can raise IT help ticket and or, or any DevOps help they can have. You can talk about DevOps help. Uh, incidents uh, where uh, whenever there is some issue with the build or if there is any issue with the tool that it is not coming up or not able to accessible so that time they can raise uh, an incident or if they want to create a new flow or if they, if they want to have one new stage in the build they can create a new feature and uh, assign it to the web stream or if they have any issues with the existing builds or if there is any problems with their environment uh, like staging or production or uh, uh, integration in your business, they can create, create a problem so or service request if they want to upgrade any tools or if they have any issues with the uh, dependencies they can create a service request or if they want any new dependencies to be added to the nexus or if they want to have some uh, uh, service request uh, or, or any product issues uh, or uh, if they need any licenses uh, they can raise a request with approver where uh, they can add uh, their manager reporting manager as an approver and uh, once uh, the manager approves it then only they can raise or you can have a promotion or a deployment request where uh, to uh, upgrade the version in the production so they have to get the approval from the uh, manager reporting manager or service owner who, who manages that particular uh, application so these are the issue types you can have support you can also edit these things uh, when and where uh, whenever there is a requirement so this, this is not a, a complete uh, list of things you can have uh, you can add it or you can remove it based on uh, your project models
so these are some common uh, uh, issue types that you can see when you have when you are working for a uh, maintenance projects so uh, let's let's see in the visual format or example format so this is the kanban model uh, so uh, like i said uh, if, if you see my projects i have created uh, two projects uh, which is crumb and kanban this is the kanban model uh, and here you don't see the sprint planning sprint meetings or a uh, uh, back product backlog you don't see any of these things here uh, in this model as you see there won't be any timelines there won't be you don't have any timelines configured or you don't need any any of those things so you can have a board uh, which you have to do tasks and you can have maximum of two tasks if you are so since uh, here in this team we have only two people so we are can list whenever you add something you your uh, this thing shows as max two uh, and uh, it is highlighted this column will be uh, whenever issue type six is there like that it is going to highlight and whenever at any point of time there is no, there should be only two progress items that you can do it and you can uh, so you see that uh, you can move these items like this and whenever this particular item is completed and they can push it to here and once during this review period they can uh, pull this any task they want to perform and they can put it here and once uh, once this review is done they can push it to done and uh, and this is how you can do it it is not like you cannot you should not wait till uh, the sprint planning is done or see sprint ending towards the end of sprint we are going to deliver or release some version it is not going to happen in that way uh, it is uh, done then and there whenever there is a uh, review happens and uh, everything looks fine then they are going to deliver so let's suppose let's analyze it with one simple access request uh, let's suppose you got a request uh, saying that uh, um, so they need uh, some uh, uh, kubernetes cluster access for production uh, view basically for any development team we provide view access or uh, uh, the normal uh, 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 accessible i mean only they can see the list of objects or resources that uh, have been created inside the cluster so uh, oh, so a new team member came into the project and they want to give access to the production so they are going to raise one request so if you select the re request you can see the project model also the workflow basically you can design workflow for these kind of uh, projects uh, one second. Mm. manage workflow see here this is where uh, you can select the issue type uh, basically if it is a change request you can always create one uh, new new transition and uh, you can have uh, a review validity or if you want to get these things get approved before uh, moving it to done and you want to add one approval here you can always add uh, done status transition on your road you can have uh, add to do status progress status to get approval add it and put it here before review update the workflow save and continue so how this is going to get impact so let's suppose okay so uh, let's analyze this with an example uh, so let's suppose we got an access request um, um, saying that there is a new team um, team member adding to uh, development team and uh, uh, he needs access to see the uh, objects or resources inside a production cluster so only view access we are going to provide not uh, updating or editing access inside the cluster so to give that uh, since it is a production it goes for a valid approval so normally his reporting manager or a service owner is going to approve this particular ticket so we are going to move this access request to approval so uh, what are what kind of tickets can go to approval uh, we can we can 
give a list or we can i can tell you a short uh, uh, short uh, answers like uh, any access request or any change request or uh, any production deployments uh, or uh, uh, any deletion or uh, uh, updating uh, request on production or if you want to change anything in the production environment it should go via approval uh, it could be service owner or it could be uh, a manager uh, who is managing the entire uh, uh, environments so this is where uh, the approval goes in these are some kind of tickets where uh, approval should go since it is an access request on the to production we will send it for approval once it is approved uh, so whenever we move it for approval the concerned uh, approver we are going to feed all those approvers uh, service owners and all to the jira and whenever you move it to here right is going to send a notification to them and once it is approved uh, we are going to see it in the ticket one uh, and we can move it to in progress now let's suppose i am in this team and i got this ticket and uh, once it is approved i will start working i will add his name to the uh, development team and uh, and uh, he and my part is done and uh, and i'll send i'll put in comment in that saying uh, we have provided request please uh, validate once uh, he will uh, see the or our developer uh, team member we will see the uh, see the uh, comment and uh, checks if he got access once uh, he gets access he is going to update it like uh, yes uh, i can see the uh, objects inside cluster i i got the access please close so we can uh, so once once uh, our work is done, we are going to send it for validation where uh, developer validates it. Here is where uh, he will start validating, and uh, once he he, he validates, uh, then only we are he puts saying uh, it is all validated and I got the access. He can close it. Then only we will move it for done. So if you analyze this entire project flow, we what we have done, if we got a request, we send it for approval. And we will uh, once it is approved, we are going to work on it. After we go, we work on it. Then we are we will send it for uh, validation. Once validation is done, then only we are going to close. This is the flow that we are going to work. And there is no time bound. Or we don't wait for uh, entire sprint planning or sprint uh, uh, review meeting is done uh, during. We don't deliver in that process. In Kanban, we are going to deliver then and there. So it happens to the change request as well. Whenever we are working on change request, so it goes for approval. Once it is approved, during the change window, we are going to work on that particular change window, or we move to in progress when that change window happens. And during that the change window, we will perform all the activities and we will update the ticket, and then we are going to move for validation. Uh, so in this part, we can validate within our team members or we whoever performing that that particular activity, uh, so they can. Test sheet and they can post the test results once that is all validated by uh, the valid uh, uh, test results by by uh, checking if all the tools or uh, the entire process is working fine by triggering few builds or deployments we are going to put those uh, uh, validations or the results that we got in here and then we will move to done so this this is how the entire Kanban flow works. let's go back to our slides and see the next slide so which one to choose scrum or kanban uh, so it mainly depends on uh, uh, the project uh, use case if your project uh, is is a development project and uh, uh, and, and uh, if you are working on a iteration iteration model with a proper requirements at the time you can choose scrum if your project is kind of maintenance and uh, you need to deliver uh, things uh, then and there uh, or immediately so then at the time you can choose Kanban so assigning this to uh, any um, uh, assigning this to particular uh, uh, devops when when you can choose scrum or when you can choose Kanban so in in devops there are multiple areas that you can think of so let's suppose uh, this is a new project and they need a whole lot of uh, infrastructure and automations uh, that needs to be delivered over a period of time and all those requirements are gathered and we have time bound uh, 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 requirements with all the time bound uh, uh, deliverables. So at that time you can think of applying Scrum. 
So what happens? Uh, let's suppose if new project comes in, they need whole lot of infrastructure, they need lot of configuration management, all the CI/CD process, uh, the Jenkins files, uh, workflow libraries, all these things needs to be created, and the entire workflow should be set up. For this process, uh, we'll be having all the backlog items that is going to get listed um, either by the product owner or the lead uh, who is leading the DevOps team. So he knows or the manager who is uh, working for managing the DevOps team. He, all these people uh, combinedly sit together and uh, define the list of backlog items. So since um, we have all the requirements gathered and, uh, and uh, high level items that uh, they need for this project to be implemented during the process of development uh, of the application. So if, if developers are working on the develop, uh, development uh, and we as a DevOps team will work on pro providing the infrastructure. So we are going in hand with the developers. So we can uh, we can uh, assume or uh, can have this Scrum model to be implemented for DevOps team as well when you have proper requirements and uh, we need a proper uh, time bound deliverables that uh, uh, that are needed for project to flow. So at this point of time, we can think of applying Scrum because we have infrastructure as a code. You are writing the code in Terraform and uh, provisioning infrastructure, uh, and uh, this is a, a is a development activity. And we are going to work on this kind of things. When you have such type of projects, you can go, you can think of uh, having a Scrum. And uh, if you have a project that is already developed and, and it just needs maintenance or enhancement to the existing thing, at the time you can think of Kanban, where uh, your project needs only the replica. So entire process, the entire infrastructure is already developed, entire pro project flow or the CI/CD process uh, or the flow is already developed and it's already up and running. And uh, all you need is just to improve the uh, existing things, like you have some manual interventions, like uh, uh, the uh, uh, the places where once you deploy your application on the staging environment, you may you will wait for the uh, application team to trigger the uh, sorry the QA team uh, or or uh, any testing team to trigger the uh, functional test cases and then wait for their approvals. At that time, you need some automation to automatically trigger these kind of things. So this is small enhancement in the existing flow. At this point of time, you can think of uh, applying Kanban or if you have uh, a kind of uh, access request or, or a long list of microservices that are being managed under Kubernetes uh, environment or any EC2 based machines and you want to deploy, you are getting deployments on daily basis um, where you want to deploy on uh, every day based on the environments. So you can think of applying that because you don't need to develop an entire infrastructure or entire CACD flow. It's already developed. You just need to uh, manage the deployments and see if all the deployments are going fine. Or if you are managing the infrastructure, it's already developed, but you are still manage. You are, you want to manage it uh, effectively, cost effectively, like managing, uh, uh, having a auto scaling setup, or uh, improving the. Uh, if, if it is a Kubernetes cluster, cluster you can improve the uh, resources utilization by properly defining uh, pod uh, disruption, but PD pod disruption, but it's all these things. You can have it and you can make sure, make all these uh, things effective, cost effective and uh, a, a process oriented automated things without any manual inter such kind of maintenance projects which comes, which needs to work uh, on daily basis and get delivered, things get delivered on daily basis like access requests or any uh, new service onboardings or new service requests or production deployments or staging deployments or any tool upgrades or any maintenance activities that needs to be uh, security patched or any, any, any uh, base image upgrades. All these things, you can consider these things to be uh, applied in the Kanban. So, in this DevOps model, you can apply it on uh, Kanban model. So most of the teams, uh, they can use Kanban or they are using actually Kanban for these kind of projects. So we are going to talk about agile development with uh, DevOps implementation uh, using a flow diagram. So we are going to see uh, uh, the scrum based model or, or Kanban, we can apply both the things in the uh, in this particular project and you can see how uh, this can be defined. So in this particular uh, 
in this particular flow diagram you can think of applying scrum to the development team and kanban or scrum to devops team as well <laughs> So take this as an example, uh, like let's suppose product owner uh, is the one who is taking requirements from the vendor and he has all list of backlog items uh, that is need to be developed or uh, over a period of time, how his uh, uh, product should um, product should come outcome or, 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 the pro or the application should be delivered. So he has all list of items requirements that is a planning comes in where uh, development team um, teams like uh, uh, the proper development team, QA teams, DevOps teams, or the other teams who are involved, they come in, sit together, and have a proper planning, high level uh, uh, diagram of uh, all the infrastructures, application flow, everything they are going to discuss and plan, and uh, create a backlog, product backlog items, and the product owner defines the hierarchy of each uh, each uh, uh, epic or a, or a user story that has been created. Uh, so he is going to give hierarchy or prioritize so he is the one who is going to prioritize in the zira and then scrum master creates all those backlog items product backlog items and uh, scrum master comes in and create a sprint and that is the uh, initial development starts and uh, he use the development team uh, lead or manager uh, comes in and uh, uh, picks the product sprint backlog from the product backlog he'll pick the items if you see uh, scrum backlogs so let's suppose uh, the sprint planning hap is happening he is going to pull all these uh, items uh, into let's suppose let's start a sprint and my sprint should span for a two weeks you can see these weeks custom weeks maximum it is four weeks but you can always customize it according to your needs but we are planning for a two weeks sprint and uh, it is going to end it is going to auto create sorry. it is going to auto create so you you get this diet uh, for two weeks you can start the sprint so your sprint has started and if you see the active sprints you see the list of uh, previous closed items here and uh, you can always uh, take the backlogs which you want to deliver this in this particular uh, items let's suppose let me on the product backlog and the developer head or developer uh, lead or uh, manager will come in that he is going to deliver he is going to deliver these items in this particular product uh, in this particular uh, sprint now come to active sprints he is going to pick all the tasks from here which suppose he has picked all these tasks and uh, as per this he will assign it to the individual developers from jira so he has assigned it to some particular developers and uh, let's suppose it could be manish babu it could be kalyan so it is already assigned and uh, these two are the developers assuming that these two are the developers and he is going to work and, and all these notifications whenever you change something in the zero you can always have a um, uh, notification updated via email or via push notifications to the slack so now we have taken slack as a intermediary for getting these uh, these uh, zero updates and uh, we got some zero updates here we got zero updates to the slack and the people started developing and they pushed their code to uh, github and they raised a pr to merge it to dev branch and they started merging it once it is merged uh, the build gets triggered and uh, the cicd starts here so the jenkins is the heart of uh, Gen uh, heart of cicd and it is going to pull the latest code from the github and it is going to uh, so whenever a build triggers it, jenkins will go and uh, get the code from the github and it starts building the code you are like assuming that it's a java application and we are building the java application so maven we consider maven as a build tool, build tool 
so now we uh, we started building the code and we started analyzing the uh, uh static code analysis using the sonar cube and we are starting uh, so for java applications we write unit test cases in j unit j unit for unit test cases these are j unit test cases and maven build will check the test cases and the build uh, it will compile the code uh, check the test cases and the uh, nexus is used for storing the artifacts so all these things happens in in this one single build where uh the compilation starts and uh, code quality check happens and once code quality check is finalized it is going to check the code coverage using kobarchra or jakako java code coverage or uh, or, or uh, kobarchra where uh, it is going to see all the test cases for each uh, code that has been written is covered or not it is going to check and once uh, the uh, static code analysis is done and quality gates are passed the artifact is uh, published to the nexus so this is where uh, the entire build happens once the artifact is pushed we are going to create a uh, docker image where that docker image is getting and get scanned by the snick tool snick tool is where uh, it's a security tool where uh, it is going to check the vulnerabilities bug fixes like that in, in, in or, or any code related uh, uh, vulnerabilities you, you can check all those things in the security scanning so in this particular scenario we are using static code analysis tool is sonar cube where it is going to check the code coverage as well as static code analysis duplications bugs like that here once we once we create the uh, uh, once we create the uh, docker image or our application image uh, with the artifact that have been created we will scan it for security vulnerabilities with the uh, snake once uh, the security vulnerability is uh, uh, cleared uh, it is going to scan and show the vulnerabilities if it is uh, having zero vulnerabilities or zero issues we are going to push it to docker hub if suppose there something fails or it fails with the security scanning we will fail the build we are not going to move or if uh, compilation fails we are going this build gets uh, stopped here or if any so quality gets that we have kept in the sonar cube if it that gets failed we are going to stop the build so these are the cases that build gets stopped if, if build is successful we are going to publish artifact to nexus and we are going to create an, create an application image and we do the security scan once the scanning is done then only we are going to publish it to docker hub this is docker hub it could be a plain docker private repository docker hub repository or it could be aws ecr ecr is for elastic container uh, repository so where you can store uh, images uh, registry uh, not a registry where you can store your uh, docker images it could be base image or it could be application image i am going to talk about base images and applications images in the uh, build uh, build stage or the uh, docker uh, stage so that is where uh, we talk but for now we are going to store base images and application images here so now application image is done and uh, uh, so coming to this phase uh, planning we are going to plan and then we are going to do the coding and if you see building is done and we have done the package published one published the plain package into nexus created a docker image and published it to docker hub now this entire continuous integration and continuous delivery is done till docker hub now this is where the continuous deployment happens so we we are going to get uh, one service uh, request or our promotion request where uh, I am just comparing with the uh, uh, Kanban model or uh, you can, uh, Kanban model here where uh, uh, let's suppose uh, for this particular flow if it is a starting of the project if you apply uh, uh, agile method uh, scrum model in the devops then you can think of this project is initiating and this entire flow is not yet set up and the entire uh, uh, infrastructure setup is not there at that time. Uh, we can uh, think of applying the agile methodology where this entire CI/CD flow is being needed to be set up and it should be automated 
with all the automations, uh, workflow libraries, shared libraries according, that work according to the branches and we are going to do a lot of automations uh, and, and uh, scripts uh, for, for applying our infrastructure and configuration management uh, cre that creates uh, entire uh, uh, Kubernetes clusters, starts deploying, use some package management to like help to deploy our application. Like we have a lot of things to do at the time. Uh, we need a time bound uh, 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 incremental way of uh, delivering the uh, uh, infrastructure and uh, environments at the time we can think of applying Agile. Now let's suppose in this case, uh, in the next scenario where everything is already created up and running and you have all the setup in the existing project and you just went to the project and you saw the Kanban model. So in Kanban you might get uh, um, uh, access request saying to get any access request to this environments or you have some build failures or if you have any docker image pushing or sneak inch, sneak tool failing or any, any of these uh, uh, upgrades or uh, tool upgrades or any of these uh, base images upgrades. At the time, you can think of getting the issue uh, uh, Kanban model where you get a request on on time basis or issue basis, and you are going to work and try to resolve as soon as possible. Some production deployment failed, you want to roll back, you might get a request to roll back. So like that, you are going to get a lot of tickets over this, and then you are going to work on individual task basis. So now we are here until CACD, continuous integration and continuous delivery, where you have delivered your uh, package and the image, application image. Now uh, these things can be handled in one, one Jenkins job and the deployment can be taken care in the next Jenkins job. Both can be done in one single job, but uh, ideally in an organization level, it is not going to happen in one single job. Most of the cases, if the organization, if big organization or MNCs. So uh, now uh, once this is delivered, um, then you might get a request from the developer saying that uh, the application image is scanned and it is uh, secured and approved. Uh, please deploy it on the uh, environments. Now we can think of uh, having this environment access to the developers itself where they can they can only trigger the deployment to int environment. So to that level, we can give access to the development team or they can manage the dev environment if they are if at all uh, if the project flow is in different way so normally uh, uh, most of the cases dev environment access full control can be given to development team where they can test their application in their uh, it, it, they can feel this dev environment as their local and they can do whatever they want and they can manage this infrastructure but all the int staging and prod environment can be managed by dev apps team uh, so the entire infrastructure setup, the management of deployment management strategies, automations, everything is managed by the DevOps team. So now you got a request uh, to deploy it on the uh, uh, environments. So initially, we let's uh, let's suppose we started uh, deploying it on Intel environment where uh, the integration between the two teams or regression testing happens. Uh, two to different services, uh, the integration between the two different services can be checked or multiple uh, services can be checked and regression test will be taken care and once uh, we have this uh, first initially we will get an approval uh, for deploying it on each staging in the environment. Once uh, approval is done we are going to deploy and uh, uh, QA team tries to take, check the integration uh, uh, regression testing or integration testing once it is done they will approve it and one uh, if they find any issue they are going to create again bug, bug fix together uh, they are going to uh, developers is going to start again working on the bug fix and they are going to create a new build and again it goes via this and once it is done they are going to update the version publish the docker uh, 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 image application image into docker hub or aws ecr and again they they are going to update the ticket or create a new ticket and then uh, again we will redeploy the new version and the once this in QA is approved then we will send it for approval for uh, staging environment uh, uh, deployment and uh, we are going to deploy again performance testing QA team some QA team inside uh, testing team comes in and starts testing it and once that is done they are going to uh, uh, approve it and uh, it goes uh, approval request for service owner to deploy it on production environment. Once service owner approves approves this particular uh, uh, 
uh, approval then we can think of open deploying it on production environment once <coughs> production environment is deployed and, and validated uh, then we can send it for approval for uh, development team for development team approval where once they they approve it we are going to deploy it on multiple dev environments since uh, development environment cannot be one you can have uh, multiple clusters imagine that you have kubernetes and you can have multiple clusters for each environment and uh, when you are handling such kind of environment if let's suppose uh, one one small feature is being developed by in a microservice and being deployed in all the environments to reflect in all the other clusters on dev environment we are going to deploy it on the dev environment at the end so let's suppose you have five uh, dev clusters inside uh, uh, inside this dev environment so so the team that is going to develop a new feature can deploy only on the assigned uh, dev cluster let's suppose in five clusters they are they, they have tested only they deployed on dev cluster one dev cluster and tested there and they raised uh, uh, integration deployment act, uh, request and we deployed all these things and uh, moved to production environment now to reflect that particular change in all the five clusters um, apart from uh, inside dev environment since already one is done we are going to deploy in other four clusters that is where dev environment uh, deployment comes in so this happens uh, in kanban model where uh, we may get a production uh, deployment access uh, request where we are going to deploy in series of environments and get approval once everything is done we are going to deploy uh, dev environment so you can think of having this particular uh, kind of uh, release model or uh, have this high level uh, diagram which is going to under make you understand this entire setup so this is how you are going to have the entire uh, project life cycle and uh, it could be mostly similar to most of the applications and all the uh, notifications all the management things can happen through slack or email notifications or you can have a alert config alert management configuration where you can have separate a monitoring system here which monitors all the environments and alert management things so that we can discuss it later but for now please try to understand uh, the entire uh, uh, flow of uh, uh, the project So that's what the flow diagram means and uh, should you have any questions please shoot out uh, an email to us or reach out to dealdrivers.com or you can have your uh, application uh, google uh, android uh, application drill dev apps and uh, you can have youtube channel and we have all the instagram and facebook ids where you can reach out in multiple ways thanks for this session and have a nice day